A very good morning to you all and a warm welcome to the virtual masterclass series presented by the Yong Suzo Conservatory of Music. My name is Benjamin and I'm your moderator for today. Today's session is the latest installment of the Conservatory's Masterclass series, which the Conservatory has run for its students and the wider music community for over 17 years. Through these Masterclasses, our students are given the invaluable opportunity to learn from some of the world's finest musicians. In recent years, these visiting artists have included Nobuko Imai, Gautier Kabusson, Andreas Schiff, and Masaki Suzuki. The Conservatory is glad to be able to continue its tradition of presenting its Masterclass series, which continues to evolve in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, we welcome a virtual audience joining us from wherever you are on this lovely Thursday morning. We are greatly privileged to have with us today, Professor Vadim Gruzman. Universally recognized among today's top performing artists, Israeli violinist Vadim Gluzman is acclaimed for his appearances with the Berlin Philharmonic, Boston Symphony, London Symphony, Royal Concert Gebau under Ricardo Shari, Christoph von Donahy, and other leading conductors. Mr. Gluzman has introduced the public to new works by Sofia Gabay Durina, Gia Kancheri, Moritz Egert, Elina Fesova, Lea Auerbach, Petris Vask, and his planning premiere performances of concertos by Eriki Sventu and Joshua Roman. Accolades for Guzman's striking catalogue of recordings for the BIS label include the Das Passant Dior of the Year, Gramophone's Editor's Choice, Classica Magazine's Short de Classica Award and Disc of the Month by the Strat, BBC Music Magazine, and Classic FM. Today, Prof. Gluzman will be working with students on a diverse program of violin music. We will begin with violinist Zoman, who will be performing Isaiah's Violin Sonata No. 3. Thank you. 
Can you hear me? Yes, very good. Fantastic. Uh, well, you have more to offer than than many people are ready to receive. You're 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 a wonderful player. Um, but since I'm here to offer some constructive criticism, I'm going to do it. Um, I, I really did enjoy listening to you. I, I, I enjoyed listening to you musically and uh, as a violinist. Uh, it, it's wonderful to see somebody with so much control and, and uh, so much freedom to, to uh, manage the instrument. Very, very good. Um, what I want to encourage you to do is to actually take a closer look at the score. Uh, and, and in, in this case, uh, with, with Isai in general, I very often wonder what if. 
What if he was not one of the greatest violinists of his time? What if he was not a, a, an educator and a conductor? What if he didn't go to the United States and became a, 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 a music director of, of the Cincinnati Symphony, etc., and only concentrated on composing? I do think he is an extraordinary composer. And uh, somebody who was very much ahead of his time, uh, you know, this is written in uh, 1924. And um, he's using uh, uh, compositional tools that were really not popular at the time. If you look, do you have the score with you? Oh, yes. Yes, good. If you look at page three, uh, well, this is uh, uh, after the double bar. He's using quarter tones. Have you noticed? Do you see this? This this signs this uh, square with an X and a dot underneath. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, that's a quarter tone. It means quarter tone down. Uh, this is really not something that was uh, popularly used. Uh, he, I, I do feel that he was very much ahead of his time. And also, if you look at the way it is written, there is so much information. He's writing something, some kind of direction. Uh, I'm not exaggerating, almost on every note. Yeah, certainly there are many, many, many signs in every bar. Um, I think since he was a violinist himself, he knew the, the attitude that, that violinists sometimes have, and that we are sometimes not particularly careful, and we sometimes just play in a way by ear. And this is a little bit what is happening to you, I think. Um, you have heard this piece so many times, and I'm not saying this to, to accuse you. Uh, I'm guilty of the same since uh, we all have access to extraordinary recordings and extraordinary amount of recordings available at moment's notice uh, and in absolutely inevitably they will affect us so what i want to do i don't, I don't want to tell you please don't listen to recordings do of course do this is the, the greatest joy uh, for, and it's an enormous source of inspiration. Uh, but I think that we need to be able to separate and to, to be able to look at the score and try to understand what is it that he is, that the composer, in, in, in this case, he uh, is, is trying to tell us. So let's start from the beginning, and I, I'll try to move through, through the piece uh, a little bit. You, you, do you know what ballad is? I know, but uh, I don't know how you describe. <laughs> well, it's it would be a good start to, to, to be able to, to, to describe it in, in language, because we need to describe it in, 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 in sound eventually. Uh, ballad is ba basically, to make it simple, ballad is a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and the very first thing that he tells us uh, uh, right after he, he gives us indication of tempo, he says, Il modo di recitativo. Yeah, in a way of speaking. Yeah, and this, this I think, gives you a sign for, for basically the whole piece. Um, what I missed in the very beginning, uh, from, from your opening to uh, Molto Moderato Quasi, um, I missed a sense of development. Uh, there was, there were series of, of beautiful phrases that were, uh, in a way, disjointed simply um, because uh, I did not feel your heartbeat. And I'm not saying that this should be played uh, um, like a metronome, not at all. You will see that uh, after, um, um, look at the score and tell me, in molto moderato quasi lento, something dramatically changes in the way he writes music between first four lines 
and then Molto Moderato. What what is he starting to use there that he was not using before? Okay, to save time, he is using bar lines. The music becomes the music becomes much more organized. The opening uh, is is of course much freer. Having said that, I need to be able to understand the values of notes without looking at the score. Yeah, and this is this is something that I would want you to do. Um, why don't you start from the beginning and already on the on your first opening note? First of all, I don't need to uh, see this. You are giving me end one. I don't think it's necessary at all. I would, I would much rather be able to suddenly realize that the, 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 the sound is appearing. Rather than place it. But once it appears, I would love to be able to somehow understand. And then if we manage to go on, why do you think he does this, this fingering? One, two, what is he trying to do to give us exercise how to change position over, over uh, uh, crisscross fingerings? Uh, what did you say? What between two notes? The music between the two notes. Between two notes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Music is in general between the notes. Wonderful. I'm very happy to hear it. But I think he wants not only not only that he wants an, an actual connection. You hit it completely. You articulated it beautifully, but I didn't hear. I think it's a sigh. Oh. Yeah. Let's try it from the beginning, please. Sorry. If I can suggest, instead of taking bow to the violin, Let's bring them together, have them meet each other. Tell me, where does he start the shendel? Uh. And where did you start the shendel? No, you were already... Have patience. Now let's talk. Let's talk quickly about this sforzandi. Yeah, he uses them quite a lot uh, for expressive tools, and uh, they, they repeat in in a very similar places. I need them to be um, consistent in the way that you're playing them. Sometimes you play them with a fast bow. Sometimes you play them with fast bow and vibrato. Um, can I suggest actually something else? Can we try, try heavy 
and slower bow with intensive vibrato. Can you try this? From Yes, 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 yes. Just be, be careful with your vibrato that it does not go beyond the note. Can I ask you a favor? Instead of doing this, let's stay in one place. Okay, very good. Let's stop, let's stop, let's stop. Isn't it difficult to make this crescendo? Yeah? You know why? Because you're moving your violin. You're, no, no, no. You, you have fantastic technique and great control. You're just moving against yourself. You're doing this. You are moving in the opposite direction of, of your bow, so you're making your bow shorter. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Stay. From here... And... In general, uh, I would suggest that you look at yourself when you play in the mirror. Uh, you will correct many, many things that you do physically in terms of moving. Uh, you move counterproductively. Yeah, you, you are, you're making your life more and more difficult than it needs to be. It is already difficult. This is very difficult. So let's not make it more difficult. Tell me, please, between lento molto sostenuto and Molto moderato, quasi lento. Which tempo is faster? Which tempo is slower? Uh, uh, the second one is faster. I agree. Because first he says lento, molto sostenuto. Mm -hmm. And second is quasi lento. So it's not quite lento any, anymore. I need to hear immediate motion. Oh. You started even slower than, than before. And little by little you, you, you sped up. Let's move the tempo right away and then be patient. Mm -hmm. Let's not start accelerando, let's not start crescendo until it is time. Try it from, uh, from, Much better, much better in terms of tempo development. Let's not start molto moderato louder. Let's not play the second phrase even louder. Okay. It is all you connect it and play exactly the same dynamic as I finish. Stay, 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 stay. Stay piano. 
say, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, have patience. Mm -hmm. Good, wonderful. This you can do until until, until the, the sunrise. Very, very well played. Uh, please keep the lid on. It's much more dramatic if you delay the the the, the uh, uh, arisal of excitement. Now. Uh, let's go to the next segment, and this is something I think very important. Tell me, do you have your uh, whole book, the, all six sonatas, or you don't? Uh, I don't. You don't. Okay, then you you have to trust my word. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at the the way it is written, starting uh, Allegro in tempo giusto. Show. Tell me in. There is something special in the way it is written, in the way he uses. I, I'll making. I'm making it quick for you. The way he uses accents. Where does he place accents? So you know about it, but you know that you you made accents only on the beats. You played tidam babam babiram ba tidam babam. Yeah, this is something that he does constantly. I flip to sonata number four. Uh, yeah. There is this music. He does not write accents on any of the beats. Beats are tenuto and then accent. Again, accent. You will find it in, in all over. Uh, is throughout, he is using off beats for energy, for excitement, and he is not using the beats mm -hmm. to separate and to cut the phrase. Mm -hmm. So we get him, yadam, tadam, yadam, and same thing here. Ladam tida, yam tidam tada, instead of tidam baba, yam tida. This is immediate vertical motion. He is creating a horizontal motion, which is very typical for the time. Uh, at this moment in Franco Belgian uh, uh, area, uh, the, the, the direction is much more important than momentary you know, pleasure of smelling a flower. Yeah, you, you need to know where you're going. And the more, the longer your phrase is, the better sense of direction you can get. And to get it, this is the way, is not by accenting the beats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but connecting them through great tension. Try it, really try to, making accent is very easy not making an accent that's an art yeah let's let's try it Now you're you're starting to notice. Yeah, uh, I would suggest that you take this slowly, very very slowly, and really build this habit of horizontal playing that is supported by this excitement of of uh, upbeats. Okay, okay. Yeah, it, I, I think it, it's much much more more uh, effective. Now, why six sonatas? Do you know? Yes, you do. I will tell you, and you will, and you will say, oh, of course. 
This is his chapeau to Mr. Bach. Ah. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. See? Um, there is, I, I'm going to be quick, I'm not going to torture you uh, with questions, but there is a rhythmical figure that Bach is uh, basically obsessed with. Yeah, we will, we will hear it everywhere. We will hear it in a theme of every uh, fugue that Bach ever wrote. Do you know what, what this figure is? Almost, almost. It's it's ta ta ta. Yeah. There you go. Ta ta ta. Ta ta ta. Here is your ta 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 all over. Everywhere, and you will see it throughout the piece. I do think that we need to be very consistent in terms of rhythm. I'm not saying that we have to play like metronome, not at all. This is super duper romantic music and we have to play rubato, of course. This figure, I don't think is negotiable. This is his hello. Uh, I think we need, to, we need to really observe it. You gave me every possible version of, of rubato on this ta 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 yeah de depending on your comfort and, and your emotional state watch it yeah i would i would really try to um uh, be very very careful there um jumping forward uh let's go to uh, uh, the just because we, we, don't, we don't have that much time let's jump forward to dolce con espressivo does this mean slower uh, no no um what happens your tempo distribution again uh, uh similar uh, we'll talk about it later as well was a little bit upside down uh, he is making it a very gradual relaxation first by relaxing relaxing the character yeah by giving you subito piano dolce and espressivo and only then giving you poco meno calando and then arriving into land yeah can we can we take it from here and make sure that you are yes there is a <gasps> before me, uh, subito piano but let's keep the tempo become become uh, gracious become very elegant but don't become slow mm, okay <laughs> And now, and one second, one second, and now is your is your chance. Uh, take your time and start singing. Yeah, he no longer he gives you he gives you staccato. It's all tenuta Very, very beautiful. And and here you you can afford. Fine. Let's do it once again. But uh, do you see a letter P uh, at the beginning of this bar? No, here. You know what it means. Let's try to avoid, in general, this kind of gesture. Time. 
lower. Take, take time, time. Take, take, no, 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 no. Please, please take time. Really take time. Yeah, otherwise your a tempo will will not make an effect. Yeah, you will you will keep playing around the same area. We need to be clear. Okay? So uh, again to save the time. I cannot overstate how important is not making accents. Please, please make sure. Can you please take it from from major? From here and let's go on. Just to make a point, he is writing a, 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 a legato, do you see, on the bass line. What you did was this. Let's create longer lines. Yes, we separate, we subdivide, me too. But let's, let's phrase it as, as legato, yeah? And then uh, when we go on, do you remember what he says on the next page? You don't. Tempo poco più vivo. What does it mean? Faster. What did you do? I first slow down and I go faster. He's asking you to go faster and then to slow down in a, to, to, to do the allargando. You, you, you did the opposite. Let's try. This is, this is not a, 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 you know, Sirtaki or Hora. Yeah, this is not a, a, a little by little faster. This is actually the other way around. So what I suggest is uh, right away tempo. Yeah, it, it's not my suggestion. It is actually a suggestion of, 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 of Mr. Vizai. This is one. Two, what is your dynamic when you uh, come to the end of this segment? And what is the dynamic when you continue? He gives you huge way to develop. You are playing it slower and as loud. Let's split the difference. Okay, go. And what, what does he say here? Piumoso. So we need this is even faster. And this is why he said he was he was a, a great violinist. He knew what he was doing. This is why he says at the tip. Mm -hmm. Because it's it's easier to manage. Continue. Starting with look again the same idea. He's not giving you accents on downbeats. It's one, two, three, one, two, three. Never one, two, three, one, two. So let's let's make a point of not accentuating. Yeah, otherwise I hear it all becomes very vertical. I need horizontal line. Let's try. It. 
Um, once again, più mosse. Fantastic play. Hi, Professor. So sorry to interrupt, but we have uh, approximately one to two minutes left. Yes, then I will spend it to, in, in, on one subject. Uh, in general, I wish that you had a little bit more flexibility mm -hmm. in your thinking. Yeah, you have, again, I told you, you have wonderful control and then you. you there is no limit technically to what you can do, but my guess is, of course, I don't know you, but I feel that many times when you are playing with accent and, or, or you, you are being very, um, let's call it energetic, sometimes unnecessarily energetic, yeah, it is because your pinky is not compensating. Instead, we get... Your, your, your hand is absolutely uh, straight, uh, and it's not absorbing the shock of, of touching the string. So inevitably, instead of, I would love for you to work on this. Uh, it is not something uh, that, that is difficult for you. It's, it's something that you need to pay attention. And all the time expect sound to be around, first of all. If you need to make it more sharp and more uh, uh, energetic, you will do it. This is easy. Making accent is easy. Playing sforzato is easy. Playing legato is an art. Yeah, and this is this is something that, that can help a lot. Okay? Okay, okay? Good. Bravo. Good luck to you. Thank you, Prof. Guzman and Zomeng. We now move to the third movement of the Siberia's Violin Concerto in D minor, which will be performed by violinist Georgi Moroz. Accompanying Georgi is Mr. Ge Xiaozhe. Hello, very nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you too. Thank you. 
Now you can hear me. Yes. Good. Fantastically played. Uh, you have uh, enough energy to give electricity to to the whole Singapore for for the next for, for months at least. Uh, great. Um, and your energy is also your enemy. So let's try to deal with that. Uh, you are you are in. in very, very fine player, but let's move to what we can do better. I need you to be able to somehow, and do, do understand me positively, to take half a step back. Um, both in terms of um, emotional involvement and physical involvement. Yeah, um, uh, you are letting your emotions to to uh, undermine your playing, and uh, I'm believe me, I'm not against emotions. Quite, quite the contrary. 
but I need to be, I need you to find a way to use them in such a way and project them in such a way that it will contribute to music rather 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 than take away from it. Um, and it has sometimes to do with, with uh, actually careful um, uh, attitude, to, more careful attitude to the score, which I would love for you to have. Um, and also uh, uh, a little bit cooler head. Let's let's go from the beginning. Few few subjects right away. What's your dynamic? What? Uh, let's try again. No, 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 no. Let's try. Let's try again to guess what's your dynamic. No, it's uh, poco forte. It's poco forte. And yes, I am annoying and boring and whatnot, and I don't care. I uh, I think that Mr. Sibelius deserves our respect. Uh, what does it mean, poco forte? It means not completely forte, gradually. Gradually, no, that would be poco a poco. No, that that does not mean uh, gradually forte. Uh, poco forte means little forte, small forte, uh, less than forte. You are absolutely right at the beginning. Basically, what happened with you? You started playing in such a way, with so much energy and so much. Uh, uh, physical impact into the instrument and in, into the string that basically from the first bar on there was no development to music. You you came out and you showed me all your cards right away. Do, 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 do you play cards sometimes? Yes. Please. Yeah, you, you know you shouldn't show your cards. Yeah, this is, this is exactly what happened. And uh, the, the result was that um, all the energy that you do have, which is incredibly impressive, and all the, all the stamina that you have, you didn't even break a sweat playing the third movement, uh, it basically was, was lost in a way, the, the effect of it. I think we need to be able to, to build ourselves up. So let's try to do that. Um, let's realize that our first forte is only here. And... Yes, so th this is this is eight bars after you begin playing, and twelve bars after the beginning of the movement. Yeah, the uh, this is a, in general a very thick score, meaning the 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 writing is 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 rather massive. And yes, we need to be sometimes a little bit more more uh, uh, in pushing through the sound uh, in order to to survive against the orchestra. That's it's it's a reality, but not at this moment. Yeah, you know who is playing with you. Yes, symphony cellos. And violas. Uh, everything is underneath you, and it's it, it's it's uh, uh, also poco forte. And when you come in, it's pianissimo. So if if the, the musicians musicians are attentive, uh, it should work fine. So that's my first order of the day. Two, please have enough discipline not to. Sp you, you are basically speeding up uh, through every bar. I hear this. <laughs> I'm exaggerating, but you are shrinking the bar, and by doing that, uh, you are taking away from your energy. Yeah, running is uh, rushing. Excuse me, has never been sign of strength. Um, why does it happen? It happens because your bow distribution is not. Uh, either not thought through or doesn't quite work. Have you thought about how you distribute the bow in this figure? Padam, 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 padam. Yes, yes. What is your plan? Uh, my plan is to play the, this, uh, two groups 
zimy Deadpool. And then another two notes here. Very good. I'm, uh, there are many different strategies to, uh, as to how to play it. Yeah. I don't want to impose anything, but already in the beginning, because of the way you are addressing the string right away, with with how much of of, of uh, 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 impact you are, you were already much too much towards the tip. And then what? You have to compensate. And that's why it happened. You're panicking. So if you had enough control not to lose the ball, not to play too loud, as simple as that, yeah, have have a little bit patience. Uh, patience is a great virtue in general. Um, and only develop it to the to the top D. That would be absolutely fantastic. Can we try that? This is this is this is this is quite a bit better. Can we try not to uh, help ourselves? Meaning, I'm I'm giving you a slow motion illustration. This is it's a habit. This is not a new piece for you, I, I imagine. Yeah, not new. No. Uh, it's habit of playing it with too much bow and then panicking to come back to the frosh. And this is this is why you are you are trying to help with your violin. It, it, realize that all you do, you're making yourself rush more. Yeah. So let's let's try to be poised, physically speaking, shoulders down. Uh, and even your your first note. I would try to avoid Yes, energy, but controlled energy. Energy, energy that is not going to burn down the house right away. Yeah, you have a big house to go through for for for, for the next five minutes. Let's try again. Let's stop. Let's stop. Thank you. Much better. Uh, is this your intention? Uh, you are you are very often not every time, but most of the times you are paying a curious to my ear attention to the third beat. Is that is that your intention? I think it shouldn't be too yes. obvious. Maybe it's not my intention, but it's kind of. Uh, there needs to be, of course, energy on the third beat, but I, I don't think it needs to be prolonged or or set on. Let's create a longer line. I, I I'm I'm afraid it it, it cuts the, the 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 energy. It, it's not it's not necessary. Cuts the line. Sorry. Let's do it again. And when you get to the top, when you get to the top. You were back to your modus operandi. And then what? Control yourself. Then you're panicking.
this is much better. This is much, it's much steadier now. Um, my next subject here is is your articulation. Uh, I hear pada pada pada. I would like to be able to hear pada pada pada. Meaning, I need quite a bit more activity here on short down bows. A little more pronation. I hear um, basically catching the string on each and every, each and every one of these notes. I'm exaggerating, of course. Can you try this once just by yourself slowly and really feeling uh, that it's kind of quasi pizzicato. Yes. I need you to find this, find a way to get this into your bloodstream. Yeah, it, it, it's it, 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 your your articulation is in general in 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 this stroke is a little bit unfocused. Yeah, and and uh, especially when you are playing in the lower register, it is detrimental to clarity of of what you are saying. Yeah, especially if you are in a bigger room, uh, if you're playing if you're playing with orchestra, which you have every reason to do. Uh, it it needs it needs a, a super clear articulation. Um, good. Let's let's move on to and let's immediately talk about um, all different kinds of emphasis that that Sibelius is using. We have accents, we have forzatos that he likes so much, and we also have these. Quite frankly, you don't discriminate. You play all of them basically in the same way. Uh, let's maybe talk about... I'm sure that you would agree that they, they do need to have some differentiation. Um, Sometimes I will I will uh, say that it is a little bit of wishful thinking uh, because at such speed to really have a have a chance to say oh this is an accent this is a rinforzato this is forzato you know but I think we should at least attempt um, because of uh, your your uh, uniformed uh, uh, accentuation throughout it becomes a little bit too vertical to my taste. So I would find a way to di differentiate through looking what is an accent? What, what, what do you think, what it is? If this is the articulation? Mm -hmm. What kind? Uh, that's that. That's uh, for me. For me, this uh, release. That's wonderful, uh, but I, I, I'm not. I'm not in agreement with emphasis. Uh, Maybe not emphasis, but does, it's like does it remind you of anything? This yeah, okay, sign. No that's exactly what it is. Accent is a very quick diminution. The accent is a very quick release. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in essence. And it is certainly, uh, I, I would be religious about if, if we were playing with you, Mozart or Schubert, then I would, I would really drill a hole in your head. Uh, in, in case of Sibelius, it, it maybe is not so, so uh, uh, perfectly precise, but let's agree that accent is less of an impact than, than for Zappa. Yeah, there is much less of, of an impact than the for Sandro. And then we will be able to, to at least give a chance to a longer line. 
goes straight do re pa pa sol sol si and right away there your your uh, i don't know you speak do re mi or a b c both what's what's your language really your sol dies is 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 immediately played with so much power <laughs> Let's find a way for a little bit more suave uh, uh, application, and then you will be able to give it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then they will find. If not, it, it's uh, more and more of the same. Mm -hmm. wait, wait. Sorry, to, 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 sorry to stop you right away. Where? Where do you see a staccato and an emphasis on fa dies? Why? There is nothing that, that indicates fa dies as an important moment. The following bar. Yes. Mm -hmm. But first is ta di ram pa di. You gave it already to me twice. So I'm not going to pay attention the second time. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Very impressive staccato. I, as a violinist, I appreciate it very much, uh, e even though you're rushing a little bit. Uh, but any interest in the Rinford Sando here? <laughs> you just got rid of your biggest worry. You can take a little bit time. <laughs> yeah? Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. Um, what is your dynamic here? Mezzo forte. Mezzo forte. Stay, stay, mm -hmm. stay. And you are arriving to forte much later. You, by the time you get there, you've been playing forte for so long. Um, you know what I what I can compare it to? There is a style of parenting when parents uh, scream at their children all day long uh, without pointing fingers. Uh, what do you think child does after a while when he he or she hears scream all the time no idea only coming bad things in my mind <laughs> no there's nothing bad nothing bad the child stops listening ah, that's true. Yeah. as simple as that you you don't notice any anymore any longer they've been screaming for so long it's just you know very similar with music. M music is another language. If you keep screaming uh, after, after uh, I don't know how much time, but rather quickly, uh, audience will not be listening to you. Not be listening as attentively. Yeah, if, for me, the most, the most uh, uh, powerful moment uh, on stage is silence. Screaming is... It, it's good when, when, when it is done in, when it's measured and for a reason. Then, then it, it can work. Let's do it again. Do, re, pa, pa, sol. Is there? This was so much better, but and did, did, didn't you feel how much lighter you were? How much easier it was to play? Yes, yes. Yeah, good. Uh, is there an emphasis here? Is there an emphasis on that on that terza? That diminuendo only. That's diminuendo. This is a proper diminuendo. Is there? Is there? A, impact mm. no please don't do that i know i know that half of recordings if not more that you have heard uh this is 
what you hear, but it doesn't make it right. There is no reinforcement. Go uh, straight there. Do re mi sol fa si. Let me ask you, what what makes you decide this? Why do you think that this stroke is, is, is of interest? I think uh, because of the dots on the first two notes. Okay. Well, this we can argue. If if there if these dots mean mean uh, for, then apply for everything, or it is only for the first note. But let's say it is for the whole passage. Mm -hmm. Can we make it a, a horizontal line? Line. This is a scale. Scale by essence is a motion that leads you to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but by playing it the way you do, it's very 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 chalk. If you wanted to to be articulated, let's maybe make it with wrist rather than your arm. Rather than this. once again. Is there anyone, uh, any uh, emphasis, any accent, any sforzando? No, only crescendo di linea. Not at all. They're, th these are sighs. <sighs> yeah, if it, you can imagine, uh, you know, uh, Helsinki is, is, is full of, of um, seagulls. Uh, and I, I I haven't spoken to Sibelius, of course, but but uh, I imagine. Did, did, have you heard Seagull scream? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, I think this is this is very similar. Ah, ah, ah. There is nothing. There is, and Seagull is is one of the most romantic images in in literature and and, and in, in, in art. Uh, I don't know. It, it's, it's just my my imagination. Uh, I I would I would to av avoid. You're you're being aggressive. I, I I really don't think this music is aggressive. This this music is desperate. This music is painful. Uh, of course, incredibly romantic, but but it is not aggressive. Yeah, it's it it, it is very common to play it this way, and I think I think it is unfortunate. And, and quite quite unnecessary. Yeah, for sake of time, let's 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 go on to the, the next uh, segment. <laughs> let's stop. Let's stop. We have accents and we have forzato. What is what is more emphatic? Right now, it's clearly accent because it's it's on your down bow. Let's let's compensate and try to save the bow, and then really have enough and try to have discipline not to. as safe as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, one more subject that I, I will forget, I'll, I'll mention, I might as well mention it now. Um, it is your your, your uh, vibrato. Um, 
it is incredibly uh, expressive, very energetic. Uh, but it is sometimes used together with a very high speed of the bow. These two together for me are our uh, recipe for hysteria. Yeah, if if you are looking for this vibrato, which I'm not at your age, it is perfectly understandable, and I I will support it completely. But then I will try to look for a different uh, application of both. I will try to find maybe heavier and slower rather than faster, because fast here and high speed vibrato here, I'm starting to to doubt taste. Yeah. Let's do it. Again. Sorry, your down bows, your accents on down bows are significantly stronger than your spazzato. Let's 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 try again. It's it's. It's a matter of discipline. You, you you can turn circles into squares on violin. You you have no limit. You you certainly can control yourself and not hit so much. Yeah. That was better. It, it can be better still. Uh, sorry, we're being interrupted. Please, please do say. Uh, hi, Prof. Yes, we do have about two to three minutes left. Very good. We'll try to use them wi wisely. Thank you. Um, you I, I'm sure you do notice. The rhythmical uh, figures there. Um, the way you play them, it very closely resembles uh, just a broken chord. And I think this is a, this is a very important moment. Uh, you know where it is coming from. In in what in what other uh, music? Exactly. How come how come it is in Sibelius? What's what's wrong with him? And it's not only in the, in the concerto. You will you will hear tata tata a lot, and, and in in folk music in in, in, in in Finnish folk music as well. Why? Where where are you from? If I may ask. I'm from Ukraine. You're from Ukraine. Okay. Yes. Maybe as as I know, they speak. The, their languages are similar, the same group, Finnish and Finnish. The exactly, you are absolutely the right. The music of the language applies to the uh, folk. You are absolutely right. Uh, languages are really not similar at all. Uh, the Ugrofin group, yes, yes. Uh, Hungarian, Finnish and Estonian. Uh, Estonian and, and Finns, they can actually understand each other. Hungarian has nothing to do with it. But it, it's, it comes from the same root, Indian nomads came and then they split and somehow some stayed in, in Hungary and then the rest went went up uh, north. But uh, there must be some kind of a root connection. I would make it explicit and I would make it incredibly clear, maybe to an extent of exaggeration. Yeah, uh, you can do it yourself. You don't need my control. Next segment. Uh, this is very much, um, um, it's a typical problem of us violinists. Uh, on, on string sol, we play loud and with a lot of vibrato. Yeah, it's, it's an a, a instinct that, that was granted to us by this piece. <laughs> 
that we have to play loud and be heard. Uh, you realize that this sequence it's going on even though there are not that many bars it's rather long in the, in terms of structure again you you're opening all the cards right away yeah you gave me immediately uh, 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 all the information I didn't want to know. Uh, I need you to find a way from this, call it mezzo forte, as, as he says. This this crescendo needs to be incredibly gradual, and to make it work, I would suggest that we delay it as much as possible, as much as it is. It, it will happen if you do absolutely nothing and just start playing. <laughs> Just because you're going higher and higher, it will become more and more open. Yeah, so I would I would start in earnest crescendo when I hit the first uh, quadruplet. Sorry. Uh, not before that, not actively. Um, Ah, and, and one more. Um, when when the composer writes a slur over a beat, when the beat is included as the last note of the slur, like it is here, you understand what what, what I'm saying? Когда доля залегована. Is it done? to emphasize the beat or to actually stay away from the beat? I think stay away. Absolutely. So essentially, and I'm now exaggerating, it's... An... It is not... Mm -hmm. Understand? Uh, this was exaggeration, but uh, the, the, the danger is that, that you are distributing the ball slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, fast. It's natural because we are leaning with our ear towards the beat. It's, it's, we were born like this. But in this case, again, you are going to chop the phrase. Yeah, and clear, even if you look at, at these bars, it is clear that he is looking for a long line. There is no doubt. Yeah. Um, so I would try to stay stay away. And then when you get to your finally occurs, la 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 re, re, do, la 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 there is not one accent. There is not one sforzando. This is the broadest, uh, the most tenuto based music you will find. So please don't go hitting people, you know how it ends when we do that. Yeah? Uh, many, many really wonderful things. I, I, do, I Yes, at the very, very end. Um, starting starting with your sequence of uh, uh, sixth and then decimus, Please be extremely careful with your vibrato. You, you, you are getting very excited, which is absolutely understandable. Uh, but we are actually losing the center of, of your intonation, and your intonation in general is is very very good. Yeah, so try try not to not to uh, uh, lose lose the center and, and vibrate down from the note, not above the note. And then my last last uh, thing to pay attention, just the last three bars. Mm -hmm. He starts the last passage in mezzo forte, and then he says crescendo possibile. Yeah, you started your uh, uh, passage in three fortes right away, which, mean, which meant there was no crescendo possible at all. Yeah, so it was again screaming and again screaming and screaming. Not necessary. Yeah, uh, 
we don't I don't think we show strengths by playing loud. Mm -hmm. We show strengths by not playing loud. Especially in music like this. Okay? Good luck. Bravo. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prof. Grusman, Georgie, and Mr. Ke Xiaozhe. Last but not least, we'll be hearing from Alyssa Go, who will be presenting the second and third movements of Bruch's Violin Concerto No. 1. Accompanying Alyssa is Dr. Sherry Kaur on the piano.
Wonderful, bravo. Beautiful playing. <clears throat> now you can hear me, right? Hello. Nice to meet you. Hello. Bravo. Absolutely beautiful playing. Uh, many, many wonderful things. I enjoyed it quite a lot. Um, what I enjoyed the most is your ability to sing even in the fast passages and in the, in the third movement, you found every opportunity to, to play beautifully. That's, that doesn't happen too often. I'm very happy. Um, I would like to find a way in the second movement for you to be more consistently beautiful. Uh, it has to do with your bow and bow distribution. You know, there is one part of your bow that you don't really like. You know which, which one it is. No. You, try, you try not to go to that part of the bow too often. Yeah. Why do you think that is? heaviness not quite to prevent heaviness we, we, we could have done something else and we'll talk about it in a second essentially we and you are not the only one there are many people who don't like the frog uh, we're afraid of this right we don't want scratchy sound and we know that it can happen so I will try to explain to you why we, we're, we're afraid and how to work around it. Um, I, I have to tell you something that uh, I mostly do for myself so I can look at myself in the mirror. Uh, I think what you have underneath your violin your sh shoulder rest is really something unfortunate because see for me my violin is placed on the shoulder and then for me it takes this much effort to bring the bow to the string your violin is placed here i'm exaggerating of course but for you it takes more effort your violin is higher yeah, so your hand has to work extra hard to bring the bow to the string. I'm not saying it is impossible, but I think it is important that we realize it. And if you play with shoulder rest, then we have to compensate. So you compensate like this. I will show you um, something. You tell me what do you think you see wrong. happens for you it, it is your you have have you noticed that your shoulder is going to too, too high yes. you have noticed yes. the reason is it it happens subconsciously you're because of your violin being up here so your body is trying to compensate by doing this so there are two exits from, from this situation. One, you can take the device that you have underneath your violin and donate it to Red Cross and then play without it, uh, which would be my solution. But it, it's not something you can do overnight and you certainly need somebody who will uh, help you get rid of the shoulder. If you stay with shoulder rest, it's not impossible, not at all. I would need you to find a way not to raise your shoulder, to keep it where it is, but to work more with your elbow. So, rather than this, 
I would like to see this. Instead of... We need to lighten up... The, you, you said the absolutely correct thing. We need to relieve or release or both the weight as we come closer to the front. Yeah? So the, the most natural way to do it is by raising the, the elbow. Of course, it needs to be done within reason. And then you will be able to use your whole bow. And then you will be able to do something that I wish for you to find a way to do. And that is consistent bows. Yeah, very often I see this when you play. I'm exaggerating. And your bow is not moving smoothly and consistently all the time. You are very musical. You have beautiful tone. It's very appealing. But because of this, your phrasing is not always very natural. It's not always uh, clear enough. So let's try to do this. First of all, let's imagine that our right hand resembles our lungs. So we exhale and then we inhale. Instead of or okay, let's try. Sorry to stop you right away. Sorry to stop you right away. What do you do before you? Say something. Exactly. You say, my name is, hello. I saw this. Let's breathe not only with your lungs, but also with your hand. Can we try? Wonderful, this is much better. Can we try to exaggerate the the lifting of elbow? Just just for, for exercise. Wonderful, wonderful, much better. Okay, next mission. Let's try to um, do this with your vibrato. From one finger to another, I want them to take vibrato and give it to the next finger. And then take from next finger and give it to the next. Etc. 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 I see quite a bit that you are stopping vibrato by the end of the note.
you understand? Let's make sure that fingers simply go from one to another without without any stop. Wonderful. This is this is really better. Wow, very impressive. Um, now, do you know what Bruch writes here on E flat and the next bar exam again? Mm -mm. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. And we just talked with Georgie about accents. Uh, accent is a, is a very quick release. You didn't you didn't do either sforzando or accent. You, you you just played beautifully. I think there is some kind of uh, message here. He is trying, and trying, and finally says, "You know, I will go the other way." And he says, you know, this this was in vain. And I will go here. I think it's one of the most beautiful moments in the in the concerto. So we need this. Don't play it so flat, okay? Let's 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 uh, take it exactly from here. Yeah. Maybe think of of this accent as if it was a very quick diminuendo. So we release through the bar. No. It's the other way. Try it. Very good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, how is it uh, with with uh, elbow? Is it very difficult for you? No. Okay. What does it take? Um, thinking. Thinking exactly. As long as you remember, yeah. It it, it it is not. You're you're very flexible. You adapt very quickly. You just need to remember. Yeah, and I want you to also promise me that you will not cheat. Right now you are cheating a little bit. Instead of when you are coming to the frog, instead of only lifting your weight with your elbow, you also do... You are taking your violin underneath. I would like for your fiddle to stay where it belongs. Yeah? For obvious reasons. Would not want to end up to playing on the on the fingerboard? Now, just because of time that is running, um, with this kind of bow application, you will, first of all you will be able to use your whole bow, and you will you will be able to give much bigger phrases, much longer phrases, which I think is very beautiful for. Um, 
for romantic music. Um, quickly, can you play for me from here? Let me stop you. You are you are missing two notes. You're playing. Play it slowly. Exactly. When you're playing in tempo, you're eating two a one 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 of the a flats and g yeah be 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 careful so this is in general what, what i would need to find in the second moment is continuous bow continuous bow speed and one last thing before we move to third movement in general when we're playing and we will work on it in the third movement now in general when we play up bow we need to remember that the effort that we give should be different from the down bow. And the reason is very simple. Uh, the reason is gravity. You know what gravity is. Yeah? Uh, we play with gravity when we play down bow. And then we play against the gravity on the up bow. So in order for down bow and up bow to be equal, you have to give more physically of an effort on the up bow. Uh, and this is this is something that we, at least myself, often forget. Uh, so at the, the, the result is... Um, I'm exaggerating, of course. Yeah, but in order for us to, to really sustain and to make sure that your up bow is a continuation of your down bow, is, is the, the way is to give a little bit more of an effort. Even sometimes play with a faster speed of the bow, which is only seemingly faster. Yeah, when you make it faster on the up bow, it will be exactly the same as, as, as your down bow, because down bow is helped by the gravity. Okay? And having said that, let's go to, third, to, to the third movement. And there are a number of things that we need to address here. As I said, I really loved your, um, how should I say, uh, singing approach to it. You, you, you really gave many beautiful moments. What I, what I missed in general was, technically speaking, articulation. And musically, I missed a bit of bravura. You know what bravura is? Bravura is being brave. Yes. He says uh, allegro and uh, uh, energico. Uh, exactly that. Your, for example, here is my 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 problem with the up bone. Not only you didn't stop your bow in the uh, pause, you did not articulate the 16th notes. So what I heard was I couldn't hear what I suggest. <coughs> excuse me. I'm trying to scream from Chicago to Singapore. Uh, what I suggest is to stop the bow then slightly lift it enough to then catch it with your index finger and play it from the string i heard it really needs to pop Catch. Each and every time you begin a note, it needs to start with articulation. 
Let's try it once slowly. Stop the ball. Stop the ball. Catch the string. Catch. Try it very slowly yourself just to get get this feeling. Let's really stop the ball. I see this. You, you're continuing to move. I need this finger to plant the bow onto the string. Let me maybe move further, further and you will see. Him. Let's try it in tempo or a little bit faster. Now let's start to, 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 together with your wonderful companies. Play it with, with musicality, with with uh, 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 all, all, all your energy, but make sure that you are articulating. Hello, Prof. And we uh, have a couple minutes left. Yes, about, about two minutes left. Okay, good. Uh, wonderful, thank you. Um, this was really much better. One, one of the last things that I want you to, to pay attention to. We play violin. We don't play accordion. Yeah, we don't do this. And this is a little bit what I now see. And... You're sometimes, or, or actually not sometimes, quite often, you're moving violin under the bow instead of moving bow on the violin. Or you're moving both. Let's try to plant ourselves. Make sure that your posture is, is steady. Your right shoulder is down. And we use elbow. I need to see your elbow moving actively. Try. Very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. This is it, it, it's better. You're starting to forget to articulate at the tip. Catch. Imagine that you are starting with a little pizzicato. Try again. Same here. Catch. Catch. 
Keď. Keď. I would suggest that you practice. Do you practice slowly sometimes? Yeah. yeah. So when you practice, you practice slowly and you practice preparing each and every beginning of the note. Catch, catch like, like we did now. Catch it. You need, to, you need to get it into your system so it is a habit. Not on, you don't need to think about it. Right now, it's, it's not something that happens, happens by, by, by you know, autopilot. Uh, in general, autopilot is not not so great for us. It, it, it's much much better to think about what we're doing. But I, I would really, I would even take metronome, put it on quite a slow pace, yeah, and and uh, go through this movement again and again to to have uh, uh, your your um, instinct to be to catch the string and to pronounce everything. This is what will give energy to your to your phrasing. This is what will give fire. Uh, uh, you have all the lyrical side. It's it's absolutely wonderful. I, I really like it. What I'm missing, I, I'm, I'm missing the the energy and and the the, the a, a little bit of excitement in the third moment. But I, I, I'm sure you can you can fix it easily. Okay. Bravo! Beautiful playing. Absolutely beautiful. With that, we have come to the end of our masterclass. Our sincere thanks to Professor Vadim Gruzman for being with us today and for sharing your expertise and musical insights with us. And also thank you also to our students for this wonderful session of learning together. We hope that you have enjoyed our time with us today and do join us again as our virtual masterclass series runs throughout our semester. You can view the Conservatory's online performance season on our YouTube channel. And for information about our upcoming events and other happenings here at the Yong Suto Conservatory, do follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.